All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, we're at the Leon Center. We're in Kingston, Ontario. Great show with Chinlock Wrestling and House of Hardcore. And I'm joined by House of Hardcore's champion, Willie Mack. How's it going, Willie? Yeah, all right, so far. Enjoying the view here at this nice arena. And how does that feel for you being the promotion's champion and getting to be like the figurehead and getting that sort of experience? Like, how much importance do you place on that? Well, I'm the champion. That means I'm the number one dude in the company right now. So it's, yeah, I'm like the dude to look out for and this is the company i'm representing so everybody know in australia i defended the title japan all over america and now it's now it's here we're back again to do it all over yeah for sure and what's it like to be performing in front of the canadian fans semi house of hardcore has a good rapport with a lot of the canadian fans like in toronto and stuff like that and now being in kingston oh it's good because i was here a year ago and i didn't think i was gonna have a good response but they was down for everything I gave them. So, yeah, Canada's been pretty good to me, and I love coming up here, and hopefully I get to come back more. Yeah, absolutely. And I was watching you in Lucha Underground, and initially you had kind of come in there as like part of a collective and everything like that, and then you started getting a singles run and everything like that. What was that time period like? Were you just like so excited? Was there any kind of, not hesitancy necessarily, but considerations of like, oh, how do I function differently outside of a faction? Like, was there any thought process like that? No, it was like, you know, and going into wrestling, you always want to be like a singles dude, but I went in there as a tag team, and we always had our stuff we did together, but then I went in there and did single stuff sporadically or whatever, and yeah, just had to adjust with it. Anything that comes my way, I could just go with the flow and make stuff happen. What was it like working with a promotion like Lucha Underground, like very like cinematic quality to it, and like some of the storylines were kind of outside of the normative realm of what pro wrestling works with? What was it like in your time with Lucha Underground? Yeah, it was different because I'm just used to coming in, cutting a promo, doing the wrestling, and that's about it. But you have off days where you would just be cutting vignettes and these Hollywood director type dudes behind it and these camera crew people who aren't wrestling camera crew they're actually tv and and movie uh camera crews and you have to go through everything and once you see the finished product like we there for hours people don't know that like that one minute or 30 second clip you just seen took a all day pretty much to make and once it finally comes together on the tv show it looks amazing so on your end, do you prefer like the normative, like cut the promo, it goes right out, and then you can join on that end kind of thing? Or did you sort of like how the Lucha Underground promos came out, even though probably there's like 80 takes that goes into it sort of thing? Nah, it's cool. Like the quicker the better, but I guess it'll prepare you if you want to do other stuff inside of wrestling. Like they go to acting part right there because they Hollywood people and they know the white connections and stuff. And hey, who knows? Maybe somebody tuned in to Lucha Underground and seen one of us and be like, oh, I like the way how he does this and... Maybe we get like a little small role or a feature role. Either way, it works out good. That's cool, man. Do you have any aspirations like that to get involved in the film industry? Because pro wrestling just lends itself to so many different other endeavors. Eh, sometimes whatever happens, happens. But it's like I'm always going to be a pro wrestler no matter what. But, hey, if I could get my face in a couple of movies or TV shows, I wouldn't complain about it. And I'm wondering who some of your favorite workers are because your style is very like high flying oriented and it's cool because you're, you know, kind of like you have like the, I guess the look too, like you can do like the power moves and stuff like that it seems you got like a pretty white, like well-rounded sort of skill set. Like how did you, I guess, form your style? Are there any people that you kind of draw from? Not that it's directly derivative, but are there any workers you appreciate that informs your style at all? Uh, just Lucha Libre in general is where I got my style from and watching Lucha Libre on like a Sunday afternoon i catch it on like one of the random channels in america and also watching like a lot of old ecw and japanese wrestling oh, yeah. and i know getting into wrestling what i like to watch on wrestling i just put it all into my repertoire of moves it's same the first time i'd seen you i was expecting like a bunch of like real stiff forearms and like you know the lariats and stuff like that and then i think you saw i saw you do like a plancha over the top ropes i was like oh damn okay right on yeah that's what i go out there to do because everybody expect the big dude to be the slow and powerful dude but now i'm high flyer and speed dude and power all rolled into one because you gotta be prepared pretty much because like everybody nowadays is training in all those types of styles so if i'm in there with a brawler i know how to brawl in there with a luchador we could do some lucha japanese strong style i could do it all yeah, it seems like you performed on a lot of different circuits, too. Like, on the come-up, I saw you did a lot of, like, NWA kind of stuff and learned from guys like Adam Pierce and Joey Ryan and whatnot. How important is it to, you know, get these different looks and function in promotions that are, like, disparately different from one another? Well, like I said, it's like 
you go in there prepared for everything because I got the knowledge from the luchadors. I know how to wrestle in Mexico. And then you got the American style. But it's different types of American style. Like you got the East Coast kind of fast pace, more technical side. The West Coast is like more Lucha Libre fast paced. And down South, like Texas and everywhere, they like everything kind of slow. So you know how to draw things out and make it more mean something more later on when you finally get to the end of the match. Yeah, absolutely. And I was noticing some recent work you were doing with Impact. Why is Impact a good fit for you at this point in your career to sort of like ply your trade going forward? Eh, they got a good little thing. I always wanted to be a part of Impact when it was TNA back in the day. I wanted to wrestle in the six-sided ring. That ain't there no more. I wanted to try to do an Ultimate X match. That could be a possibility. That would be great. And the X Division, that's the one thing that hooked pretty much everybody in the Impact Wrestling was the X Division, seeing all those mid-card guys become superstars and main eventers. And that's a place where I feel like in due time I should be able to stick out if I don't stick out enough already. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, going back to the prior, I guess, Lucha Underground point, is that like for sure like a done sort of deal? Do you know if there's going to be any you know talks of further seasons going forward, anything of that nature, or has it pretty much just kind of wrapped up at this juncture from what you know? Uh, from what I know, I hear a lot of things, but I'm not 100% certain about anything. But just like season one, two, and three, everybody said, oh, there ain't going to be no season two. What happened? We filmed the season two, season three. That happened. Season four. That happened. Now we just playing the waiting game just to see what happens. And you might not be surprised if it just pops up out of nowhere and be like, oh, Lucha Underground's back running again. Yeah, and my buddy Matt Marconi was like a pro wrestling fan in the Attitude Era, but he kind of like fell out of it. But I showed him Lucha Underground, and he had this like renewed vigor about it, just total enthusiasm. Do you hear a lot of people say similar kind of things like that to you, like gets them back into wrestling with Lucha? Yeah, because it's something they grew up with because nowadays – you look at TV wrestling, and it's the PG era. Everything's PG. They won't show blood and all this other stuff. But now you got Lucha Underground, which gives everybody what they want pretty much. And that's what's been missing from wrestling for a long, long time. And the thing about it is people be flipping through the channels. I've had conversations with folks at the merchandise table. Like, they were just flipping through the channels. And not being a wrestling fan, they look and saw one of the vignettes and thought it was a movie or a TV show, and then they showed a ring, and it's a wrestling show. They were like, what? This is a wrestling show? So it hooks them in like that. It's got something for people. If they love the theater work or if they love the ring action, you got them both in one place, and it's done pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. But you're at the top of the marquee for this card. You're facing Sammy Callahan. What are your thoughts on Sammy Callahan? Uh, you Sammy Callahan. That's about... All I can say about him, nasty dude, rough, intense, but I can be just as rough and intense, and I'm the House of Hardcore television champ, and I'm here to defend my crown and see where the next battle will take me. Hopefully, I'll still have it after the night. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to that match. It's going to be a great show in general, too, and really appreciate the time, Willie. I'm curious, though, if there's anything you want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here. Uh, nothing much, just if you enjoy wrestling, don't be afraid to show it. It's 2019, and wrestling's booming again. It ain't been this way since the Attitude Era, where people actually are not afraid to be a wrestling fan, and you actually show up with wrestling shirts, and people won't make fun of you. And now, you can hit me up on Twitter at Willie underscore Mac, same thing on Instagram, and f- my like page on Facebook is official Willie Mac. Go on there, hit that like button. Got me on Twitch, Willie underscore Mac 87. So go ahead, subscribe to that and everything else. Oh, and buy my shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. Look up Willie Mac. I got pets to feed. Yeah, and the House of Hardcore has like a Twitch going on too, so that's cool that you guys both have that on lock. Great having the Mac on the program, and thanks for the time, man. Oh, thanks for having me. Keep it up. 